A little more digestible were the results on day six of the Australian Open following yesterday's mayhem. Yannick Sinner sailing through his section of the draw so far. He's yet to drop a set on the way to the round of 16. Joining us to review that match, Simon Ray from the Game Insight Group and Lou Fleming for the first time. Welcome back to the AO Show. Thank you. Love to be here. This is fun. Good to be here, John. Thanks for having us back. This Italian man, he's really one of the few players who've been untroubled across the first three rounds so far. And today he took apart Sebastian Baez in clinical fashion. Six love, six one, six three in under two hours. Yeah, look, he's in great form, isn't he? I think he's one of the players that everyone's talking about. We're waiting for that moment, aren't we? And uh, he finished off the back end of the year in incredible form, beating our Mr Novak Djokovic here a couple of times. So he's coming in here just feeling like he's got the goods. I think if, uh, you know, if they're putting him in a situation to win a Grand Slam, it could come very close here. So today, playing a, a player like Baez is... He's not really going to be hurt. Baez is not a big guy, big player. Uh, he was pushed a little bit in some of his uh, in some of his service games or a couple of break points, but not many. And uh, I think that you know it's just highlighting he's not trying to you know use too much of that juice up in the tank. He's wanting to go long term in this tournament. And I'm telling you, I know he's coming in the third favourite, but every match I've got a feeling that Sinner is just getting closer to the uh, the number one player out there. Take us through the numbers, Simon. Well, how many different ways can this guy get you in terms of the ways that he can hurt you? So double the number of forehand winners to buyers today. When you have a look at just the Sinner forehand in and of itself compared to 2023, in 2024, it's the second heaviest forehand thus far at the Australian Open and marginally behind Felix Auger Eliassime. It's significantly heavier, the Sinner forehand, than it was this time 12 months ago. We know the damage he can do on first serve. So he averages close to 15 kilometres an hour more on first serve than Baez today. And then on return of serve, when he gets a look at second serve, he's stepping well inside the baseline the majority of time and punishing the ball. So it, there's a number of different ways. This guy's got multiple weapons. He can hurt you in any number of ways. And as Lou says, I, I think he's firming in perhaps not favouritism, but he's certainly fir firming in all of our opinions in terms of being a potential victor here at the Australian Open. Yeah, and I think he's coming in. I think the last 10 matches that he's played, he's won nine. I mean, Baez has come in. He's won three matches of the last 10 that he's played. So there's a big difference in terms of confidence. And when you come into the, the first Grand Slam of the year, you always think, OK, it's a little bit of an equaliser. But for who? Because these guys don't really have a preseason. They play all the way through uh, December, particularly a player like Sinner. He hasn't had a break. Christmas doesn't matter. And he's come in here just red hot. He'll have a break after the Australian Open. While Baez was probably just thinking, I need a break. I haven't won many matches. He lost first round in Adelaide, first round in Brisbane. You know, I think Sinner was feeling pretty comfortable walking on the court today. Yeah, well, 34 winners to 13 as part of 88 points to 56. It was comprehensive. Simon, it gets uh, tougher from here. Hutchinov in the next round. Well, he's a 2-1 leader on the head-to-head, -head, Sinner over Hutchinov. And as Lou's describing, as I think it, the numbers are showing, he's in career best form. So it's a red-hot Yannick Sinner. I think it's going to take an enormous effort from Karen Hutchinov to try to stop him and and good luck to him because I think Sinners are forced to be reckoned with right now. Yeah, and I think throughout the year we've seen Hutchinoff play very well, but I also see him dip in concentration at times in some of his matches. He can play a great set and then he'll just fade a little bit. You don't really see that with Yannick Sinner. I feel like he's just improved in that area as well. Darren Cahill's done a great job with the mind. Yeah, absolutely. And, and physically, you know, that's a, a question that he, he's just great. He's tall. He's got long levers. He's got great core stability. Just, just all the things he needs to do, there's been a slow improve. But the mentality, I think, is where he's now starting to believe he can take on anyone. Moving on to day six, and we've got a cracker in the women's. Yelena Ostapenko, who's proven herself time and time again as a giant killer and done it herself, been all the way in the Grand Slams before, up against a two-time Australian Open champion, Victoria Azarenka. This has got all the hallmarks of a classic written on it, Lou. It certainly has, and they had an opportunity to have a little uh, punch-out up in, uh, in Brisbane in that match there. That was phenomenal, actually. I... I watched that match and, uh, you know, at the end of the match where Yelena, I mean, she lost in three sets. Vika Azarenka played like she hadn't had a minute off the game, hasn't had a baby, hasn't had all of those things, the emotional things and the private things that have happened to her. She was playing very well. And after the match, I just went and had a, a chat with Yelena and, and uh, Yelena just said, I've played her before. Never has she served 18 aces at me. 
So that's the one thing I'm, I'm going to be really looking at when they play uh, their match. How well is Vika Azarenka going to serve? Because at the moment, in my mind, Yelena Ostapenko is the best ball striker on the WTA Tour. Does she move as well as the others? No. But does she need to? Because if she gets that first strike in, she's got everyone chasing them around yeah. like a dog at the park with the ball. I tell you, she's in front. When she steps in and she's hitting that first ball, she can open up the court so quickly. Yeah. And, uh, uh, yes, she has her highs and lows. She came out blasting against Isla Tomlanovic. Six love in about 12 and a half minutes. <laughs> Ireland just needed to just slow down, start to make more returns. Now, the question mark for Yelena Ostapenko is second serves. When she loses that number a little bit and the ball starts just, that's the shortest and the slowest shot in the game, that's when your opponent can start, you know, having uh, dictating and, and having some problems for her. So they're the two things. Is Vicar going to serve really well, get the aces? Or is Ostapenko just going to drop that second serve number a bit? That's the thing that I'll be looking out for. Well, a little punch out up in Brisbane a couple of weeks it ago. Was. I love it. I love it in terms of the slugfest and couldn't agree more. Done a bit of a, a deep dive into the numbers behind that match and lose right. If Vika doesn't serve 16 aces in that match, there's no way she wins that match. So I couldn't agree more with everything Luz just touched on. If you have a look at forehand speed between the two players, Ostapenko's hitting the ball 15 kilometres an hour bigger off her forehand wing. How about backhand side? 12 kilometres an hour bigger off the yeah, backhand wing. significant. In terms of second serve return, they're both trying to do the same thing, but Yelena Ostapenko is even more aggressive than Ostapenko and probably equally effective on second serve return. The only area that Ostapenko can't match her in is first serve speed. Ostapenko here in Australia so far in 2024 is averaging about 157 kilometres an hour on first serve. Azarenka is 167. Got yeah. her covered by 10 k's an hour on both first and second. So the thing to watch for tomorrow night as we wait for this contest, if Azarenka has a night out from a serving perspective, she can win. If she doesn't, she's in big trouble in my opinion. So 16 is the magic number. I th well, it doesn't have to be 16, but it's got to be some kind of serving performance. She needs three points. She needs the ability to get the point on her terms in behind the service game, in behind the first serve. She's got to be able to hold her own on second serve, Vika. If she doesn't do that, I think, as Luz pointed out, she's in for a long night. Yeah, and I think Yelena, she's just gotten better every single match. She's got a really great team around her this year as well. Ernest, Ernest Wiggins, have you heard that name? He's a... He's an American runner. He's been in the Olympics, and he's got this mindset, and he's really trying to coach her into zoning in, just getting into that playing zone, which sometimes we know she goes zones right out. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so much about that professionalism and, and trying to bring that concentration back on the court. Uh, I still believe, that, you know, she could really go very far in this tournament. She's my kind of my outsider, just watching her over the two weeks. And her run in Adelaide, where she won that tournament as well, she had a very tough match. It might have been Garcia. And she, I think she pulled a muscle or, and I spoke to her match. after the match, yeah. And uh, I spoke to her after the match. She said, you know, they're going to have to almost kill me to pull me off the court. <laughs> she said, I'm, I'm not stopping. And, and I really thought, you know what, uh, she may not, you know, just finish the, the tournament there. But... She just has this uh, unbelievable kind of uh, mentality and it's like, does she eat nails or something for breakfast? Because sometimes she's so tough. <laughs> It'll be a true battle of the psyches tomorrow. Any final thoughts, Simon, before a prediction from the two of you? Well, I think in terms of final thoughts, Azarenka leads the head-to-head 3-0, -head but they've all been incredibly close. So Azarenka's as good a competitor as, 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 the, as we see, as, yeah. we, as, you, as we've ever seen down here at the Australian Open. She's a phenomenal competitor. Ostapenko's at the height of her powers, though. So as Lou said, she did more than press on in Adelaide. She went on to claim the victory. And she's a frightening prospect at the moment. So I think if Ostapenko is to get off the mark in this head-to-head matchup, I think it's tomorrow. I think Ostapenko gets this done. And Lou? Ostapenko. Simple as that. Well, come back tomorrow for more of the AO Show from Day 7 of the Australian Open. And to listen to this episode in full, uh, search the AO Show wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, oh.